Hello there. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about making squid jigs. So homemade squid jigs. Okay, let's talk about the design. There are many, many designs available already on the market. Uh, by Yofuri, by Yamashita, by many people, by many manufacturers. And I don't see the point really in copying something that already exists. I don't think I'm going to better uh, a professional designer with a CAD and uh, a facility uh, where they can try and test over and over again something to make sure that it's that it's perfect um, and obviously they will have the, the consistency they will they will have each rig will work in exactly the same way so we're going to talk about homemade things so I in your design when you when you think of a design try not to make a, a, a complicated design it's possible that it may fish I'm not saying it won't fish however when it comes to the moment of crafting it, of sanding it down, of making it, then you're going to run into some severe problems. You know? I'm not Michelangelo. So I suggest that you keep things simple. Keep your designs as simple as possible. And you'll find that you'll come, you know, you'll, you'll hit on something which will actually work for you and will be easy for you to uh, to actually make okay now something that i haven't got here which uh, because i can't find the original drawings uh is that uh when i make my squid jigs i actually mark on the paper the length so that that way i can make sure that it's a, a you know a six centimeter or six and a half centimeter squid jig uh, uh five centimeter squid jig uh, eight centimeter squid jig and every time i make one it's going to be exactly the same size. Uh, that's quite important if you're going to try and make them uh, to sell. Yeah? Um, in other words, what I want is as much consistency as is possible inside what is artisan, inside what is homemade. So if I go and buy uh, a homemade uh, squid jig in a shop, and there are shops that will sell them, and I want to make sure that the one I buy today is as near as possible as the one I bought last week. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. So if you're going to make them so that you can sell them, then try and keep the, it consistent. And the only way you're going to achieve that is by uh, making each design, measuring, making sure that they are exactly the same. Okay, once I once I have my, my design, and I will play with the design, as I will explain in a minute, once I have my design, what I use is, for example, this is a box from, uh, from Squid Jig, actually, uh, Yamashita. Uh, now, this plastic is easy to handle, easy to cut, and uh, it, it gives me the opportunity of making uh, my, uh, my pattern. Okay, so what I will do, uh, this is this is one I've already cut out. So what I will do is basically I will put the piece of plastic over my design. Yeah, whatever the design is. And then I use a magic marker. I use a, a permanent marker. And just draw out the silhouette of the design I want. And then I either use a pair of scissors or, as in this case, I used a scalpel. I then cut out my design. That way, yeah, I can make sure that each one I make will be as near as possible to the last one I made. And if you hit on a design which works, then obviously you want to be able to repeat it. Now, as you can see, I have several. Some are very small. Some are designs that I've tried. And I have several of them so that I can repeat it once and again and again and again and again and again so that they are as near as possible to each other. 
inside what is art, yeah? what is craft. Okay. Now try and uh, try and use your the, your prime material, be it polyurethane or be it balsa wood or any wood that you you think is uh, is good, any material you think is good to use. Uh, try and use it up well. So what I do is obviously I draw the the design in a way that I take advantage of as much of the material as possible so as not to waste. And that way I can make more squid jigs with the same amount of of prime material. And then I cut out my, my pieces. And as you can see, they will all be more or less the same. Yeah. Okay, now, I don't want to get too much into physics now, but a little bit of physics you have to think about. Um, depending on how fat, how wide you make the, the jig, it's going to affect how it floats. So the more prime material in a certain area, the more buoyancy in that certain area. That's one thing that you have to think about. Another thing you have to think about is the water doesn't work the same. As I say, I don't want to get too much into physics, but the water doesn't work the same as dry land, shall we say. Now, as Mr. Galileo pointed out a long, long time ago, if I take two objects of different weight and drop them, they will actually fall at the same speed and hit the ground at the same time. But that doesn't happen in the water. The water is different. So something heavier sinks faster than something light. And I can use that to my advantage. Now, these are two of my prototypes, which I now make and have worked very well, which is why I've decided to put them into manufacture, as it were. OK, you'll find that they are exactly the same design. They are exactly the same length and with some variation uh, because it's uh, craft, it's not mass produced. They are as near each other as possible, shall we say, for me. However, they're not the same thickness. They're actually a different thickness. What, what I can achieve with that is that I can make the same design, but make them sink at different rates. I will use exactly the same amount of weight, the same amount of, of sinker on each. These haven't got the sinkers in them at the moment. Uh, but what, what I will achieve is that the green one, for example, which is much thinner, much narrower, will sink faster than the pink one in this case. Yeah. So I put them in the water, drop them in the water, and one will sink faster than the other. Now, why do I do this? Well, again, I don't want to get too much into physics, but as you can see, the fatter one is a pink, and I make them red, orange, and the thinner one is a green. Okay, if I think of the spectrum of light, uh, when light hits the water and penetrates into the water, red is the first color to be, you know, you can't distinguish red. It becomes impossible to distinguish. Some people think it actually disappears. It doesn't disappear. I can still see there's something there, and so can the fish or the squid. But I can't say it's red. I know there's something there, and it, I, don't know what, I don't know what color it is, but it's there. I can see it. And now, uh, the most fish and squid, they actually see in, in a scale of gray, a bit like your pet dog if you have a pet dog or a cat they don't they don't see in color now that doesn't mean that they won't distinguish one thing from another uh, but you know I can tell from my cat uh, if I throw something onto the carpet which is the same color as the carpet unless she's watched the trajectory of this item whatever it is if she if she's if it's gone too fast and she's lost sight of it she can't find it so that means she can't see it. She can't distinguish that particular thing from the rest of the design of the carpet. Okay, so what I need is to use something 
that she will see and that's what i do with her i that's why most uh, toys for 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 cats especially but for for dogs etc are bright colors so that in, in the open world in the in the natural world when you throw that ball yeah, that's why tennis balls work so well for dogs for example because they're bright yellow then the dog can see it and can chase it and can enjoy itself it, it's a bit frustrating for the animal if it can't see it so what i if i want to fish i've got to make sure that the, the fish or the squid can see it otherwise it just blurs into the rest of the black background and i am not fish now this year for example just to give you an example the uh, a yellow max wrap has worked really well the 15 inch the 15 centimeter excuse me works better than the 17 centimeter but i'll make a i'll do an entry on that one day um now it's bright yellow now here in northern spain we don't have bright yellow fish so the sea bass cannot be accustomed to attacking a bright yellow fish because there are no bright yellow fish but for some reason it attacks it it attacks it because it can see it because it's swimming in a particular way which looks like a wounded fish and it can see it it looks like easy prey and off i go yeah understand that i'm probably fishing in an area where there are thousands of sardines swimming around especially in summer so why would it attack my plastic lure when it has good food all around it well it draws its attention it's as simple as that there's nothing else to really to think about although look at that it looks as if it's out on its own. It looks as though it's injured and I can see it. I can attack it amongst all the rest that I can see. It's very easy to distinguish from the rest. And off I go and attack it. Now the same will, the squid will do the same, which is why I have two different uh, types of, of, of fish. I have a fast sinking fish, which I generally paint in greens and blues. Um, and sometimes yellows actually or a combination and slow sinking fish which work more in the in the surface for uh, which are orange and reds and uh, pinks uh, which work better in the surface because the spectrum of light as it hits the object then it defines it they can see it it might have a lot of bait fish swimming around it but the bait fish are fast quick and aware that the, the squid is there this poor little wooden creature isn't aware the squid is there and uh, and it stands out it looks like easy prey so it will attack yeah in theory that's the theory anyway whether, whether the squid is probably thinking you know if a squid is actually watching this it's probably thinking what are you talking about but you know that's the theory okay now you have to also remember one thing is that when you're when you're squidding uh, from land yeah you're you're going to have a line attached to, to the front of the of the jig and that line is going to be pushing the squid up and i don't want it to swim in this position i want it to swim more or less in this position and every time i give the 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 line the rod a tug yeah then i'm going to get an action from from the actual jig so it needs to be weighted it needs to be uh it needs to have a sinker that's without any line is actually going to sink more or less in this direction so that when it has the tightness of the line it straightens it out without letting it dip you know, you don't want the back to dip generally yeah this is again it's a theory whether the squid think the same thing well ask a squid basically um so this is a, a type a, a kind of shrimp type fish and i want it to be a shrimp like action so jerky kind of movements now other types of fish like uh, the one that cut out from here which i can't find there now oh, here it is okay like this one that's different i, I the, the way i weight these the way I, I add the weight is a completely different way and that's why it's fat around the top here because i actually want it to stay in the water in that position because it's a different type of fishing now what i will do with this type of fish is cast it let it sink yeah a countdown to whatever you know i i think is is the correct depth and then it's a slow retrieval some jerky movements but it's basically a constant slow retrieval so you want the fish to swim like a fish but shrimps don't swim like fish they're very jerky kind of 
uh, movements. And that's what I want to replicate with, with the jig. Right, I think that's basically it. Can't think of anything else that I, that, that I should be saying right now. But basically, we're thinking of the design. So when you think of a design, think of something that you can handle, think of something that you can actually craft. Don't be too complicated. Use your, your prime material to the most so that you don't waste money, be it polyurethane, be it balsa wood, or any type of material that you think is, is good. And think about uh, what I said about you know the areas where you make the material fatter, where you have more material, it's going to have more buoyancy where there is less material. So I make, I mean, all you have to do is look at a, a manufactured, mass manufactured jig and you're going to see exactly the same thing. They actually make the thickness in particular places so that the uh, jig works in a particular way. And you have to think of the same thing more or less. You have to, you don't have to go too deep into it, let your inspiration go, you know, let, let your instincts follow your instincts uh, but at the same time you know you do have to think a little bit about what's it going to do in the water and then the colors uh, the blues the greens uh, yellow to a certain extent are the last to disappear to be uh, indistinguishable whereas the reds and the pinks are the first to actually become indistinguishable from the background and what you want to do is fish so remember what I said, if if the squid can't see it, it's not going to attack it. OK, everything I'm saying is only a suggestion. You might find other ways of doing it. You might develop other ideas, which is fine. If you do, please tell me. I'm interested. Um, but as a guide, I think that, uh, that today is enough. Basically, I've just got up. It's 4.30. I haven't eaten yet. I'm hungry. I shouldn't have gone fishing yesterday. It poured down on me. I've got a bad throat. I'm going out again tonight. I don't know why. The weather says stay at home. My throat says stays at home. Stay at home. But if I don't go out, I won't fish. It's as simple as that. So uh, I've got to go out. <laughs> That's vice for you. Anyway, thanks for listening and enjoy yourselves. Good luck.